I want to welcome everybody to the Complete Wedding Podcast. Uh, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, if you can, just take a couple seconds and like and subscribe. So that way you get notified when the new uh, videos do come out. And of course, uh, you give us that thumbs up. That way that lets us know that we're doing a good job. Today on the Complete Wedding Podcast, I'm very, very excited because I get the opportunity to interview Janet Howard Fada. Um, and she is a, um, a, she creates fine art and live uh, event paintings. Um, and then one thing I, I did like see just, I guess recently, uh, a few of my, uh, the people that work here were saying how trendy it is right now, um, especially before COVID, but how trendy it is to have live event paintings. And so I'm really, really excited to uh, discuss that and a lot of other things on the podcast today. So first, right now, I just want to go ahead and welcome Janet to the Complete Wedding Podcast. So welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So You're happy to be here. Well, you're very welcome. I'm happy you're here as well. So what I want you to do first is just um, just tell us where you're from and, and kind of how you got started. Well, I am from currently living in Warwick, New York. I am from Staten Island, New York, and I have been a painter pretty much all of my life. I started oil painting when I was 12 years old and drawing from a young age. And then um, I went to high school of art and design and Pratt Institute. So really I've been a fine artist forever and been doing live event painting for about five years. And I just love it. I guess if you had to choose one, live event painting or painting in your studio, which one would you uh, lean towards? That's a great question. Every, um, it seems like for me, everything that I've done prior has led to this, uh, you know, like, because I feel like when I'm at a wedding, I get to work figuratively. I get to do a still life. Like I'm painting a still life of the bouquets, painting the people in action around me. And, um, and the venues are so big. It's like this atmosphere. It's like a plein air painting. So you know, I'm going to go with live event painting because I feel like it's so challenging and people just love it. So it's very rewarding. Um, and yeah, really, and I, yeah, it's exhausting, exhilarating, challenging. Love it. And so I just um, found out about this recently, I'd say within the last year, maybe maybe two years, um, I didn't realize this even happened in the, in the world of art. And how did you get introduced into live event painting? Mm. Well, I thought I invented it. <laughs> you know, a few, maybe it's probably six or seven years ago that I, uh, I just got an iPhone and my friend was having this maple syrup boil in her backyard. And she's got this old red truck and it was March and they have a fire and they roast things over the fire. It's just, it's a beautiful scene. I was like, I, I'm, I think I'm going to paint this. And then I, you know, and like the, the dog is there and, uh, and the smoke is rising from the sap coming up. I was like, this is like, so I use, it was the first time I used my iPhone to put the figures in place. And it did something I'd been thinking about because I run a figure drawing group each week. Uh, we hire a model and this is like an artist group. I still run it. Um, and I'd been thinking about putting the figure in the landscape. And when I saw this and used the iPhone to do it, and then, and everybody was like gathering around me, like, this is amazing. And I was like, I'm going to paint dinner parties. And what's the ultimate dinner party is a wedding. And I went back to my studio and Googled it like, you know, and then there was these other people that came up that were doing the same thing. And I was like, I can do this. I just knew that I could do it. So. Okay. And then you said that was about five years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, I guess between five years ago and now, a bar ballpark number of about how many weddings do you think you've uh, completed paintings for? Um, less than 200. Okay. <laughs> More than 100. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Between 100 probably, and 200. <laughs> it might be 150, 160, something like that. You know, the first year it was like one, and then it was like five, and then it was 12, and then it was 30. And it was 70. So it's definitely a hundred less than a, let's, you know, 
but um okay we'll, we'll we'll go right there in the middle we'll say 150 it's not quite yeah. 100 yeah. it's not quite 200. Yeah. so um <clears throat> A lot of times I talk with a lot of different photographers. We have a, a photography studio here, and it's always the question of how many events do you want to do in a year? How busy do you want to be? So with your, with uh, if you were to do live events kind of exclusively, how many would you say is where you would want to be and how much is too much? Obviously, you can't do, you know, 365, right? right. <laughs> so. Well, I'm, you know what, I felt like... Um... 2019 was I feel like it was good um I did it was 70 it was I think it was about 70 and I felt like mm, if if they were off season I could have handled a bit more but like in the busy season I couldn't handle anymore so uh yeah my goal for for 2020 was 70 <laughs> yeah <laughs> no uh, but right now there's 85 on my calendar for next year, but, you know, I felt like, I, you know, I just took them, um, but I'm not sure how it's going to go down. Understood. And so cancellations. Yeah, I understand that uh, yeah. as well with uh, everything that's going on. So uh, you said uh, you have 81 on your calendar now. So obviously with 52 weekends in a year, then you're doubling up on, uh, on the weekends. We might have a Friday and a Saturday. Um, so would you? consider doing like a Friday, a Saturday and a Sunday, like back to back like that, or? I have done it. I have done it a few, you know, and I'm, I don't, and it's usually like, you know, it's like a client that I just need to, you know, that I have some kind of connection with the, for me to say yes to three, cause it is mm -hmm. exhausting. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, like, yes, it's exhausting. Okay. So, so if you really, really, really like the person, then you'd do that third one. But for the most part, two is, is kind of where you would want to be yeah. in the weekend. Yes, definitely. Okay. okay, that makes sense. And um, so think back to those first group of weddings. We'll say those first half a dozen or so. What are some things that like you wish you would have knew back then that you know now or something that you uh, that you picked up after doing those those uh, half dozen or so like what's some some tricks that you learned or mm. uh well first of all you know i have to say when i first started it really was exhausting like just i felt like the mental physical drain on me like it really really thank goodness i only did a few because it was exhausting um Well, I'd say composition wise, um, you know, how I break the canvas down initially in composing. And, and I often, I, I feel like I need a sketch. Like that is something that I didn't always start with. And um, it just makes me stick to finding the space initially um, because I feel like if, if I don't have a plan, um, but at the same time, I still throw plans out the window <laughs> midway. That happens sometimes. Like last night, my lighting just totally changed on me um, midway. And um, I mean, I feel like I paint light. It's one of the things you, like, uh, you know, things are like all paintings are different because they're directly affected by light and atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they change halfway, it's just, I feel, you know, I feel so bold and brave when I change everything up midway, but so, but it is really good to have a composition and um, yeah, is that, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say the plan because, and I also, uh, I, I work, I guess I started out just a hundred percent in oil. And now sometimes I do parts of it in acrylic that dries quick underneath. So that allows me to make that shift halfway through if I have a different plan because parts of it'll be dry. Um, and that allows me to be a little bit more bold and brave in my changes. Okay. And so um, painting, you said, um, 
I guess you start uh, in acrylic so it can dry quickly. Mm -hmm. um, if you weren't able to do that, then you're saying that you wouldn't be able to make like any changes if you see something like with the lighting or uh, something well, that you need. No, I mean, sometimes, sometimes things get muddy, but I'm also, you know, and this is something I have learned. I'm not afraid to wipe it out. Like, that's the best thing. Like, if I don't like a fit, like, uh, sometimes when I'm at the, like, I really, I like to capture the likeness or the feeling of the couple. And sometimes I do it and I don't like it. I just wipe it out and do it again. And, you know, I know that I'm better off doing it three times than not being happy with what I have. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I definitely uh, I know what you're talking about. I do some, um, not the same, but it's, it's the same concept with the video editing uh, on our end, especially when we do some of the, um, some of the, what we call same day edit, which we'll talk about a, a little bit later. Um, one of the things that you said though, um, I guess kind of feeling drained, was it because you felt like you were um, had so many eyeballs on you, you needed to perform, or why did you feel drained after those first few events where opposed to now? Yeah, I, I think it was because I was just nervous. Like, I, I'm generally, yeah, not used to, like, initially, I think it was the people that I was really kind of, like, afraid. I don't know. Was I afraid of what they thought? I don't know. I mean, you got to have a thick skin because mm -hmm. it looked you know, when you start, it does look like a bit chaos. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to start with chaos. So you have to be comfortable in chaos. So mm -hmm. definitely. Well, more or less, uh, more, more like you have to be comfortable showing the chaos because it's fine. Yeah. Like in yeah. your studio, nobody's watching you, but it's different yeah. where it's like, oh my gosh, they're going to think I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. I, I really, yeah, I'm definitely, I have developed a thicker skin, but mm -hmm. not that anybody says anything to me. People are very kind. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And so if you had a superpower to, uh, to do your job, what would that be? Ooh, a superpower. <laughs> I imagine like a superpower that like I could take everybody's eyeballs and they'd be like dazzling. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know that, um, you know, almost like you hypnotize everybody. Oh yeah, the painting's great. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, I, have, okay. I have no idea. Got you know it. I mean? So, so like, um, like the Mad Hatter. I don't know if you ever used to watch the old Batman where he had that, that thing would pop out his head and it would hypnotize people. Yeah, and oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I mean, <laughs> because you can't control other people. All I know is I can, you know, control how much I work out the painting, you know. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. The power of mesmeration, mesmerization yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but the, it's like, I, I, I am comfortable with the fact that, like, you know, not everybody's going to not like live event painting is not for everybody and not everybody's gonna love sure. it. You know? Sure, I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to talk about kind of the process when somebody hires you and not necessarily the process uh, right now, but when somebody hires you, do they say, I trust you, do what you do best? Or do they say, I want you to capture us during our first dance or during the ceremony when we kiss? Like, how does that, uh, what typically happens? Well, I have a questionnaire that I have been working on. Uh, I say, cause I'm always adding different sure. things to it, but I feel like that really, I mean, the first thing I, one of the first things I ask is for a feeling that they want the painting to have. So, um, you know, just kind of two or three words to kind of guide me in the painting. Mm -hmm. If I have to make a decision, um, like I will ask if they have a special pose that they'd like or a specific time of the event they would like captured. And um, most people have a preference of ceremony or first dance or, uh, but a lot of people do say about the pose or um, about time, because I will ask, you know, is there a certain time of day you want featured? Um, what's, why did you pick this venue? What's the, wh why did you fall in love with this venue? And I try to, if they'll say the fireplace or the landscape, I try to make sure I, you know, put a little bit of the landscape out the window or, um, or the chandelier. So I try to emphasize those things that they fell in love with. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I do use that feeling that they give me to kind of pick a pose if they don't give me a pose. Like some mm -hmm. people say, I want to be in a dip or I want to be looking into each other's eyes. Uh, but um, yeah. Okay. And um, just curious, what are some of the common answers that you get for the feeling that people want? Because that's such a, almost like a loaded question. They're like, beautiful, <laughs> right? I'm sure you get that right. a lot, but well, what else? Celebratory, romantic, mm -hmm. love, 
um, party. Like some people are more party and some people more romance. Uh, mm -hmm. Like um, those are typically or elegant or, ca you know, some people are casual, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got you. So the answers are all over the place. So I guess yeah. it's just me that's just thinking. So it is it. certainly a guide. I really, I'm, I really like that question. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes down to like make a choice, I kind of let go. Oh yeah, well that's you know that's the sure. feeling I'm going for. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I mentioned earlier about the same day edit. So like I said, you know, with our, our videography uh, section in our company, we have uh, clients who basically do a same day edit where we record the getting ready and we record the ceremony and then we edit the video to put it together and uh, play at the reception. And um, one of the things that I always do because I do some of the same day edits and it's a ton of pressure. You only have a certain amount of time to get the video basically edited and you can't go over. There is no do overs. There is no, oh, give me an extra 30 minutes. It has to show now, then it has to show now. So do you feel that same type of pressure when you're creating uh, your live event paintings? Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, particularly if they're going to take the painting the end of the night, um, then, you know, I really, I want to get it to a point where I really have to step back from the painting and really make judgments um, on what needs to be changed and change it fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, one of the things that kind of a, a little uh, tip, I guess not tip, a little trick that we use is when we're recording uh, the getting ready, We'll take all of the best clips of the getting ready and have that done before this or you no know, before the ceremony starts. So that way when the ceremony's over, we can just take the ceremony and use the best clips from the ceremony to create the video. Do you do something similar as far as um, do you sketch out like if you're going to do the reception, do you sketch out the room or paint out the room first before anybody walks in or what do you, how do you approach that? Uh, yeah, if they allow me, sometimes sometimes an hour. An hour is all I need usually to kind of like really, you know, get an underpainting of the room. Definitely mm -hmm. uh, do that in advance. And okay, have you um, been in a, uh, um, at a wedding where you weren't given that opportunity, where you had to start basically at the <laughs> the start of the reception? Oh, definitely. And then you feel that pressure they, more. They do those room flips mm -hmm. sometimes, and you can't get in there. Or uh, one time it started raining. I was going to paint. I was gonna paint the ceremony. I started, and then it just started raining, and then and then they were like, "Oh, well, we're gonna paint inside, paint the first dance." Uh, oh wow! So, so you just I, had to change I, everything. Yeah, I wiped it out, and I mean, I didn't really get. I only had this like little sketch. I just wiped it out and mm -hmm. started again. Okay, awesome. And uh, one of the things that we talked about before I started recording uh, were the different, uh, I guess the different, we won't talk about a ton of packages, but you mentioned uh, where you give the painting to the couple at the end of the night, or uh, what's the other, can you kind of explain the, the difference between the two? Um, well, the other one is my touch up, uh, then I bring the painting home and I work on it probably four to eight hours and I then send a picture of the painting for approval to them. Uh, I try to just, you know, usually I soften edges, lighten edges, get a likeness, or put faces on uh, their family members kind of thing. And then I'll ship it to them uh, or have them pick it up. But mm -hmm. I kind of work all that out in advance because um, it affects the price of it because it's, it's a lot more work when I do touch-ups. Mm -hmm. And then obviously it's, uh, it's, I wouldn't say more of a finished piece because I'm sure at the end of the night you give them a finished piece as, as well. It just probably has more detail than it would have if it's uh, at the end of the night. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a different style of it when you take it. It's kind of a more loose painterly feel to the painting if you take it at the end of the night. Understood. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to uh, share my screen. Uh, I've, uh, so let me do that here real fast. Okay, so what I want to do is, um, like I said, I've been looking at a few different things on, on your site here, or at least on your Instagram page. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of the uh, images that, that I, I have, I'm gonna show here, uh, they depict uh, the first dance. Um, mm -hmm. So that means typically you only have a few hours 
uh, to create that? Um, how are you able to to finish them so quickly? You know, because you said like you can do the room in, in an hour, um, but to be able to do a piece like this or, or like this in three to four hours, like how are you able to accomplish that? Well, you know, I think it's practice. It just takes, um, I mean, because I, I feel like, um, I mean, so the first thing I do is after I get the room, I, I do focus on the bride and groom. I mean, I get the bride and groom to this, to the feeling where that, if I get their focus right, and then I kind of, uh, and everything else emanates from that. Um, so, but I, I do practice, um, like I said, I, I run a weekly drawing group. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a model and it'll be 20 minutes long that I, you know, you get the gesture of somebody, you know, you really do a portrait in 20 minutes. So by this wow. constant repetition of practicing, um, to capture a likeness quickly is um i think why why it works okay that that does make sense i'm, I'm going to show the the last one here obviously we have some uh, you have some great fans out there that uh, are able to display the work and, and of course it looks uh, beautiful there um oh. what when people hire you what are some things that you wish they would consider that they typically don't What are some things they would consider that they typically don't? Like Let you wish they would consider, it. like if um, they want to do a, a two-hour reception, or they want to have you outside on the beach, or something like that. Like, have they have there been any instances where you wish some people would consider kind of your craft and and um, to give so they can get a better final product? No, I usually feel like I can make whatever magic they want happen. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you know, like, let's say like I've done these backyard weddings where, you know, the, the landscaping wasn't a hundred percent, but in my painting, it was a hundred percent, you know? Mm -hmm. so, artistic liberties. <laughs> yeah. I take some artistic liberties. Definitely. Um, hmm. I guess, you know, I feel like my questionnaire kind of guides them mm -hmm. so that it does have them think about, um, you know, by thinking about what the feeling is and by thinking about, you know, do you want your pet included or who do you want in the painting? Uh, what time of day is it? Like, these are things that I make them consider beforehand. And that's why that questionnaire keeps changing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, it makes it makes perfect sense. I'm uh, I'm just kind of showing a lot of your your work on here as you're you're talking. Um, so one of the things I was thinking about too, actually, even looking at this picture uh, or the video that's that's showing, uh, what about lighting? Like, have they ever said, you know, we have this super dark room, and so you're trying to to see, and you like they've never this never happened to you? No, well, I bring my lighting. I bring oh, my lighting. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a battery operated light now too. So okay, really, um, <laughs> I'm I'm digging that. Okay, <laughs> got it. All right, so uh, my next question um, comes uh, talks about space. Like, how much space do you typically need? Mm, it used to be four foot. <laughs> uh -huh. And now because of COVID, I do ask for, you know, like last night there were stanchions and I just put them, you know, next mm -hmm. to me there. I mean, mm -hmm. so, I mean, just because of COVID, I would like a little bit more space. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Six, to, six to 10 feet. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, of space. I can definitely understand that. Um, so me personally, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Um, so me personally, and it's just my, my little thing. I hate it when people watch me when I work, when I work, uh, obviously you don't have that, uh, that Liberty. So, um, now I guess you're used to it, but are there things that uh, let's let's not talk necessarily about uh, COVID, but just in general, um, do people typically let you work, or do they ask you a lot of questions, or uh, or anything like that? Like, what um, what are the hazards in doing, I guess, the the live event paintings? Mm. Um, well, everybody comes up and says, "Bob Ross." <laughs> And that's awesome. You know, it's funny too, because when, um, when I was thinking about that, I was going to ask the Bob Ross question, the happy little trees, but I'm like, you know what, you probably would take offense to that. So I'm just going to keep that in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, people are funny. I mean, I really do like people. 
um, and people, you know, they, most of them really love it. But, um, you know, some, like I said, that I have no fear of wiping stuff out. So sometimes when people are watching me, you know, I'll, I might, I might need to wipe it out a little bit more. But mm -hmm. um, I'm like, one time I was painting this little boy's face and the mother was standing over me. Oh my God. And I just let, I was like, breathe. I just, mm -hmm. yeah, myself, just breathe, just, just focus on my <laughs> breath <laughs> and my observation. And I did it. Mm -hmm. And she was like, ah! you know, so. So you didn't, you didn't um, caution her beforehand, say, by the way, I made a tiny mistake. So I'm going to wipe your son's face away. You just did it. And she's like mortified. No, um, no, no, actually, um, I, I, I did it as a, that's not right. I wiped it out and then, and then I did it again, mm, a mm -hmm. little wipe out again. And then mm -hmm. next thing it, 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 it worked. Gotcha. And then mom gave you like the thumbs up. Yeah. You're good to go. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine that's a, that's definitely got to be uh, nerve wracking. Um, so besides Bob Ross, do you get any other questions or, or people ask you things like, why are you doing that or anything like that? Oh yeah. Oh, sometimes people are like, what, who commissioned this? Or, um, the, yeah, like, what do you, is this for sale? Mm -hmm. uh, um, what's the other thing? Um, they want to paint on it, you know? What, uh -huh. You know, they want to, some, sometimes I'll load a brush up for people um, you know, if, some, if it's the right color and the right value and I tell them where to put it, you know, mm, uh, otherwise I really don't let other people paint on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but yeah, some people, oh my gosh, there's this one guy, he was a, he was a, a neuroscientist, like a brain surgeon. Okay. And he was like, oh, I wish I could paint. I was like, oh my gosh, you're a brain surgeon? You right. You've got to have some good hands. you got to have some steady hands, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. I was like, you can do this. I had him, I had him paint on the painting. I was like, you can nice. do this. I know you can. <laughs> nice is, um, let's see, where is it? Is that the one or is that the groom? Oh, this is, um, this is the bride's brother and mm -hmm. I'll be painting. He, he wanted, I had left off the buckle on his Gucci shoes. Okay. He, like you, <laughs> like my, my shoes need the buckle. It's not a Gucci. So anyway, but the fun thing is, is that I will be painting his wedding uh, this coming April. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So you got to get those uh, Gucci buckles on there. Oh yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love this guy. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> So I know we've talked a lot about the uh, the live event paintings. As I was going through, again, all over your, your Instagram, one uh, picture actually stood out, and I was just wondering, uh, this is going to pop up here for a second, but this photo here, was this something that the um, client gave you a photograph and they told you, asked you to do it after the wedding, or was this more of a concept that you talked about beforehand? Uh, well, both, because the it was a gift from uh somebody after the wedding uh so she i guess she she said she gave it to them in a card kind of at the wedding oh you know i'm gonna have the painter do a painting from you for a photo from a photo mm -hmm. and uh the bride she had had a crescent moon photo booth mm -hmm. at her wedding and so they gave me a picture of them on the crescent moon and then we thought it would be fun to have it floating in the sky oh that's pretty so, cool yeah it was all done from photos kind of that's kind of like a little made up scene yeah there's mm -hmm. my sketch uh-huh yeah I love the sketches here I like I like the behind the scenes stuff here thank you me too and so how often do you get I guess we'll call it commission to do uh somebody gives you a photo from the wedding and mm -hmm. and say can you do that how often does that happen well like in 2019 I think I did one mm -hmm. because uh, I'm too busy mm -hmm. you know uh but in 2020, I have a few to do, so it's kind of often. Okay, I understood. I just take them on. Usually, I say no, but right now I'm taking them on. Okay, and got you because obviously you're not as, as busy, so then you're able to to uh, to do that. Yeah. Um, so then I saw another unique element on uh, on here, and I wanted you to talk about this a little bit. I thought this was very um, first gorgeous, but then very unique. How did that concept come about? First, I want to ask you that. That is a great question because it's so um, 
dear to me. Um, first of all, I've been painting these, I've been painting, I said I run a figure drawing group. I've been mm -hmm. painting nudes on mm -hmm. music sheets for a very long time. And I do them in the burnt umber kind of in that style. And I'm looking over here because I have some, uh, oh, can I get up? Uh, too late now. No, you're fine. Go ahead, <laughs> you go ahead and show us what you need to show us. That's perfect. There's a, um, can you see that? I can. Let me um, let me stop sharing here for a second. Okay. Yeah. So this is. Um, so I've been doing these nudes. I have a whole like series of them, and I'm. Mm -hmm. uh, so that particular piece, there's somebody. It's my friend's parents, who I'm very dear to me, mm -hmm. and they are in the music industry, and they're such huge Beatles fans, and that's mm -hmm. like their song, and I love her, mm -hmm. and so that is their. You know you know there's i think they're 70 now and wow. so that that photo is just wow. that was, they're so young and innocent and beautiful there uh so that's a really uh so that's so this that's how it came about really okay. the connection there and talking with my friend we were like let's put the and actually i've done some engagement um i did an engagement uh painting in this style on a music sheet before which i really think this could be a whole etsy business right here i just need to put it out there mm -hmm. no it's, it's gorgeous when i saw this i, I thought it's obviously uh, very unique i've never seen anything like it um and of course uh, beautiful and creative so this is this is perfect um i'm curious what other tricks do you have up your sleeve like uh any other mediums that you use to to paint mm, well I love pastel and watercolor, but I don't enjoy framing them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think I'm fluent in both, but okay. I really, framing is such a, you know, glass and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's not something I want to deal with. So it's one of the reasons why I like oil. <laughs> okay, I understood. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. And... Are there any other weddings or aspects of weddings that you want to paint that you haven't had as much opportunity? For instance, you mentioned um, incorporating the pets. When I was scrolling through, that was actually one of the things that popped up. I didn't really, or popped in my head. I didn't see any uh, on the hundred or so photos that I was looking right. at uh, with pets, but I'm sure they're there. So are there any other elements like blended family, pets, anything else that you wish you could do more of because it's it's more uh, more unique and more custom? Um, I have done quite a few pets, but you know, I haven't done any uh, LGBTQT weddings okay. yet. And actually I have some few, I have a few on the calendar coming up. Oh, nice. So, awesome. um, I am excited about that. I just feel a little bit like undiverse. You know? <laughs> uh huh. Um, okay. That's my, that's my quick answer. <laughs> okay. No, that's that's great. I would. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing that. Um, I guess sometime this year or is it going to be next year? Well, right now it's on my calendar for December 19th, and then um, yeah, and then in June 2021. So okay. We'll Perfect. So, so we'll see somewhere around the end of December, beginning of January. Maybe that'll show up on your Instagram, some LB LGBTQ um, uh, artwork. So that'd be great. What piece of technology do you use to help you with your job? Mm, that's a great question, too. I mean, I use an iPhone and an iPad. Like, that's great. And Bluetooth. I mean, I airdrop. So a lot of times um, I'm looking at, I'm always using multiple photo, photo references. So mm -hmm. I airdrop at the wedding was I'm often I'm not on the Wi-Fi and I mm -hmm. airdrop it on my iPad. That's very helpful. Um, otherwise, lighting. I'm gonna say that that's it for right now. Is it? Well, I mean, you got the battery operated light, so that's uh, yeah, we call that technology. Yeah. <laughs> now, is it is it uh, where you actually have to uh, recharge it or you have to replace the batteries? I recharge it. It's okay, like a USB yeah. recharge. Yep, yep. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. Um, now, I want to know, I'm curious about this, your daily gratitude list. Are you mm -hmm. still doing that? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I how... This morning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and how did you come up with that? And get, first, explain what that is. I mean, it should be self-explanatory, but if you can explain uh, what it is and how you came up with that. 
Um, well, it is every day I sit down and I write the word gratitude and the date. And then I think about the things in my life that I'm thankful for. And um, most of the time it's people, <laughs> different people, a lot of it my clients or, or um, sometimes if I'm depressed, it might just be like um, the wood floor or a cup of coffee or pens that have ink or tubed mm -hmm. paint. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, no, but it's, you know, I, yeah, I, it really puts me in a positive mindset. It has been life transforming for me. I started, it, I mean, I've always been a journaler. I mean, I've done uh, Julia Cameron's The Artist's Way. Uh, she's journaling is a creative process. And I've always been a journaler since I was very small. As I mean, I'd say painting and journaling or something I've always done. And I did the um, Hal Elrod's My Morning Miracle. Uh, mm -hmm. I did that a few years ago. Probably, it may have been around when I started live event painting. Uh, and then I took from that what I um, could you know, use, you know what I mean? Like there's mm -hmm. still some practices, but the gratitude list was something that just, I've, I've just felt like it was, it, it needed to stay. And I'm, I'm curious um, because, you know, we have busy lives and things happen. Have you ever been in a situation where you didn't start out your day or you didn't write the gratitude list and then you felt like it was something missing that day? Um, yeah, <laughs> like it's very, it's, if I have skipped it and things don't go right, I could just blame it on that. <laughs> but I mean, generally it's something, you know, sometimes I have to skip a day, you know, cause it's crazy, but, uh, but normally I just, it's like my little practice of I sit there with my cup of coffee first thing in the morning and, mm -hmm. and make my list. Okay. And my next question, uh, I am so curious um, about your chocolate wrapper collection. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How did this come about? And, and I guess, what is in that collection? So funny, because nobody's ever asked me about it before. Um, I, I started, you know, I was probably a teenager. I, I love chocolate. Um, I always have. And there's some really funny rappers out there. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it may have been a rapper like that I had that was, it's, it was like called the plumber's crack. It, it literally is <laughs> like a picture of a plumber. Like, <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and, and I got that when I was a teenager. And then I, I, was, I thought they were funny. I'd saved them. And then and then I went to Europe when I was in college and, uh, you know, and then I wanted to taste all the different chocolates. And mm -hmm. so then I started the collection and I've still, I've still, the rule is I have to taste it because mm -hmm. sometimes people will say, oh, I went to Europe and I mm -hmm. brought you back this wrapper. It's like, where's yeah. the chocolate? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, yeah, I have a little, mm -hmm. so yeah, I think it might make a nice book. I, I was wondering how you display it. So right now, how is it displayed or is it displayed? It's not really displayed. It's they're stuck in a book and I have notes in there. So mm -hmm. I need to, you know, take the time and uh, publish, you know, put it all together, scan them. Mm -hmm. I have, I've always thought about having my own you know, chocolate company, you know, mm -hmm. making my own bar. I'd like, mm -hmm. I think that's part of the next step. It has to come out with, you know, would you ever, would you paint on that chocolate? Would they be like works of art? You know, I've thought about that because I actually just friended a, a nice uh, chocolatier uh, mm -hmm. in Tuxedo mm -hmm. and he wants, we want to like collaborate. I want to paint on the chocolate, mm -hmm. maybe like mm -hmm. a Fabergé egg. That's something we've sure. talked about. And, but, uh, nice. Yeah, but I've always thought about designing the wrappers. Like I have sketches from my chocolate designed wrapper. My, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. I guess when you publish your work, then that'll be in, in there. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very curious. I was actually thinking about it when you were talking. It's, it would almost be um, your life story. 
right? You have different parts of your life where you mentioned you went to Europe when you were and something else when you started when you were like in a teenager, right? And so that would just kind of uh, a journey it's of your true. life. Because, you know, the cross country trip, you know, I picked up some rappers on that. Like mm -hmm. it, 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 good point. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Thanks. I have good points every now and then. <laughs> um, so I have two more questions for mm -hmm. you. And I, I appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with me. Uh, this has been awesome. Um, my next question is, I'm assuming you have a smartphone because uh, you mentioned you airdrop and all that. So I'm assuming you have an iPhone. What is your go-to emoji? Oh, I use a yellow heart all the time. A yellow heart? Why the yellow heart? I don't know if it just reminds me of like a flower or a friendship or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It feels like friend it feels friendly to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was just it's funny because i use it a lot I'm, it's not my go-to but i use it when i want to make sure that you know i like it but i don't like you like that like it's not romantic so <laughs> you know what right. i mean like, so I'll, I'll yellow heart you because i want to make sure you know like i love this but it's not like i'm trying to date you you know yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> um and what do you wish that i talked about today that i did not I don't know. It feels like I touched a lot of subjects. I don't know. The first thing that popped into my head was my dog, but I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, where's your dog? Let's see. Where... You know what? He's not around. I think my husband came home and mm -hmm. um, he follows him around once, once he comes home. So okay. Here. And I think I saw a mic while you're talking about your dog. What's your dog's name? Tucker. Tucker. And have you painted Tucker? Yeah. He's in my Instagram there. Yep. That's what I'm looking for right now. And how long have you had Tucker? Nine years. Oh my goodness. And, and he's huge. It's... He's like, a, I call him like a little mini pony. Cause he's like, he's, he's like, a hundred, he's like a hundred pounds. Oh my gosh. Is this he's, Tucker? He's, he's tall. Like his, I mean, his head comes like, you know, waist high. Yeah. Wow. That's Tucker. Yeah. I see right here, Tucker, seven year old puppy. So this is a two year old uh, photo that I have right here, but it's the first mm -hmm. one that, that I was able to skim, uh, scan through and find. Wow. So he doesn't look that big in the, in the photo, but I He's guess, tall. okay. Got it. It's, it's all relative, I guess. Um, so there is Tucker there. And, um, you mentioned, I do want to just touch on this as well. Um, your, um, drawing group, your figure drawing group. I do want to touch on that just a little bit. If you can uh, explain, you know, how often you meet, uh, if you're in your area, how maybe they would be able to uh, participate. Uh, are there requirements like you have to be a great artist or can yeah. you be a, a, a novice? <laughs> yeah, novice is welcome and everybody's welcome. I mean, you can just drop in. I don't advertise it. Uh, it's just people get on my email list um, and then I send out an email every week. I hire a model each week. So it's most of the poses are nude and um, it goes, you, we do 10 one minute poses and then a five minute pose, a 10 minute, and then three twenties. And that takes up two hours and it's $16 at the door. And, um, it's a really nice group. So some people are professional artists and some people are just getting back into it. And it's a pleasure. Like right now I'm limiting the group to, uh, I do have you sign up in advance because of COVID. I'm allowing just 10 people right now, but usually there's about 15 people or so. And we ran it outside in the summertime, which was great. Oh, nice. And um, wow, that, that is an uh, awesome um, concept. Um, anything else that you wanted me to cover before I kind of sign off here and let you tell everybody about how to find you? Um, anything else about that? Um, no, it's at the Seligman and at the Orange County uh, Citizens Foundation. That's where I run that, that drawing group. So okay. just say that. Okay, perfect. And so that's actually a perfect segue because um, you mentioned to get onto your email list so you can sign up because you can't just pop in nowadays and, and uh, go into this figure drawing group. So what I want you to do as I share my screen with your um, website up here is if you can tell everybody how they can find you, your uh, email, website, Instagram, however, the best way for them to find you. Uh, well, my website is jhowardstudios.com. And my email is Janet at jhowardstudios.com. That is the, if you are having, you want an inquiry for your wedding, the best way to do that is to send me your date, your location, and to that Janet at jhowardstudios. And my Instagram is jhowardfada. 
that shows the paintings how they are at the end of the night. And uh, for my drawing group, you could send it to that email or a Warwick drawing group, Warwick drawing group at gmail.com. And um, yes, yeah, support your local arts councils. I am, I didn't talk about that, but I am on the board of the Orange County Arts Council at ocartscouncil.org. And I think that's about it. Those are my. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate you telling everybody how they can find you. And, um, and I put the different, your website as well as your Instagram up on the screen as you were talking. So hopefully um, it's still up there now. So hopefully you're able to, uh, to find uh, Janet and, and uh, hire her for your event. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and close. I want to thank first Janet. I want to thank you for taking the time to to chat with me and share your uh, stories and your expertise uh, on the Complete Wedding Podcast. For everybody listening, I want to thank you for listening. Take a couple seconds and give us a thumbs up. Let us know that you like this video. Uh, subscribe because I always have new. Uh, new podcasts and new videos coming out. So you're able to uh, get notified when those happen. In the meantime, you guys have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. With it, whole team nice, whole team fire on the mic. Tell them we lit with it, whole team nice, whole team fire on the mic. Tell them we lit with it, whole team nice, whole team fire on the mic. Tell them we lit with it, whole team nice, whole team fire on the mic. Tell them we lit.